Well, good morning. It is a very cold day today. It's rainy, it's damp, feels like one degree. And I'm not ready for this because it was 25 degrees two days ago. I had a neighbor come and pick up her eggs for this week. She brought me an espresso and I thank her greatly for it because it's number one is delicious and much welcome on a day like today. Mm. So good. Um, I'm going to be harvesting rabbits today. So let me do my disclaimers to make sure that nobody is offended. This is a processing video on rabbits. I will show leading up to the dispatch of the animal. I will show the skinning and gutting of the animal. So if this offends you, do not watch. I will not show the exact dispatch just out of respect for anybody who may be offended who comes across this video unexpectedly, I will never show an animal being dispatched. I don't take any thrill in taking a life of an animal, but I do it quickly and as ethically as possible. And I know I have raised these animals in the best conditions with a lot of integrity. And I raise them for the purpose of meat. So. From the beginning, these are not pets. They are being raised as uh, feed, food, not feed. Um, so I do not feel um, any apologies or apologetic for um, harvesting animals. This is what I'm doing. This is part of our meat sustainability. Again, I will be harvesting rabbits. If this is not for you, this is not the video for you. Because it is so cold, I have no running hot water down at the barn. So I will be heating up a pot of warm water so that I can wash my hands as need be. As well, I'm gonna light a fire in the pizza oven just as a little bit of coziness for myself because I deserve a little warmth. So um, I'm gonna just leave the video running while I'm doing these things. Um, because I'm not gonna be running back and forth to shut it off, but you can actually see what my day is like. So join me if this is the thing for you. Um, just gonna warm up some water, first of all. This is the canner that I use for um, water bathing. Um, also, it's a turkey fryer, but it's uh, a great, way to warm up water down here for me. And I'm also going to be setting up uh, the pizza oven for some fire. Now, one thing is we are no waste. I keep reminding people we try not to waste. So when the egg cartons are no longer useful because they are, um, they are, let's say, falling apart or dirty. I don't use dirty egg cartons. What I do is I save them as fire starters. I'm not going to recycle them or throw them in the garbage when I can use them for a good purpose. Do you know that this pizza oven is still warm from last night? That's incredible. It's um, slightly warm because yesterday I was harvesting the tail. I finished harvesting the tail yesterday. And uh, I'm curious what the temperature is. pizza oven is 98 degrees. That's fantastic. Um, so that means it's kept its warmth all night. So I was harvesting quail yesterday. I harvested the rest of them. So uh, if you haven't watched my harvesting of quail video, you're welcome to do that. Um, just to give you an idea of how that is done. And I will be, because I now have eggs, um, and no more quail, I'm going to do some pickled quail eggs. Let me get this going. Fire starter, but it does take a little while on these damp days. 
I'm gonna try to move you along with me as much as I can. There you go. That's the pizza oven getting going. It will take a little while for the fire to start, but this is a nice heat source for me while I'm down here. And the water's getting ready uh, so I can wash my hands. So I am gonna move you over here where you can actually see my processing station. clean tub and this is going to be for the rabbits. I have a scissor. I have my knife sharpener because there is nothing more dangerous than a dull knife. And I will repeat that. There is nothing more dangerous than a dull knife. So always, always have sharp knives. And I actually have a scissor setting on here. So I'm going to just sharpen that scissor. This is just basically to get through bones if I need to. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but I will do my best to share. There we go. This here is a stainless steel apparatus to hang my rabbits. I take, these are what my shavings come in to keep the animals clean and warm. But instead of just throwing the bags away, because our dump in this area is a clear bag dump. So that means all your garbage must go in in a clear bag so that they can make sure you're not avoiding recycling. So I can't use these as garbage bags, but I do try to recycle them in as many ways as possible. And one of the ways is I put them through my hanger. I already have a holes made, so it makes it a little bit harder. But what I do is I put it through my hanger as such. And the purpose of doing this is I am protecting the walls from any blood because I don't want to attract animals here afterwards. If you notice, I recycle a lot. So these are like old cupboards we found. We put them here in the barn so we can use them. And I have an old wash tub, but this is where I'm going to be putting the skins and the guts. Um, now, I, when I harvest rabbits, I keep the ears and dehydrate them as dog treats. Dogs love it. And um, I also have a friend who enjoys giving it to her little Chico, so I make sure that she gets some all the time. Can you see my breath? This is how cold it is. Just like that, 25 degrees two days ago. Unbelievable. So I've got my setup going. I am going to take you over to the dispatch station. Now, this is the dispatch station. Stainless steel again. I have had these for, I'd say, almost 30 years. They're still brand new because they're high quality. Um, but you don't need to buy these expensive items. You can get a piece of two by four and then a piece of plywood, cut this notch in it and it serves the same purpose. Now, I'm going to describe this because I, I will show you, but I'm not gonna show you the dispatch. But let's imagine that my hand is the head of the rabbit. What I do is very quickly, I put the head here and then I pull down. What happens is the neck dislocates and it's an instant death, which is a very humane way to dispatch a rabbit rather than using a broomstick um, technique, which I have heard many people say that they use where they put the head on the ground, they put the broomstick over the neck and then pull up. I'm not comfortable doing that. I want to dispatch an animal as quickly as possible, as painless as possible. If the rabbit does not squeal, it means it died instantly. And I think out of, let's say, 200 rabbit I've killed in the last few years, I've only heard one squeal, which might have just been my technique at the moment, but I think those are pretty good odds for my efforts. Um, so this is, like I said, 
where I dispatch the rabbit. I will show with a rabbit how I do it, but I will not actually dispatch. I'm not going to show you that portion. Okay, so again, if you do not want to see this process, please do not watch the screen. This is how I get ready to dispatch an animal. I bring out one rabbit at a time, and I bring them with their heads tucked underneath my arm so that they're not panicking looking around. I grab them by the hind feet so that I have control because they do kick and they kick hard. And then I slowly slide up to the ears. Again, turn off this video if this is gonna offend you. I'm not gonna show the dispatch, but I will show getting ready to do it. I take the animal, put her through there, and then I pull to um, dislocate the neck. Now, I will not show you doing that, but I will be doing this rabbit now, and then I will show the skinning and gutting. Okay, my rabbit has now been dispatched, so the rest of the video, you will see a dead animal. If this offends you, please don't watch this. Um, here is my rabbit. It is completely um, dead. It, I can feel there's no life in it at all. Once this is the situation is when I take it over to the harvest station. Now, I'm gonna try to make sure that you can see everything because it is all about learning. Adjust this a few times, I think. What I do is I take the legs and I hang them. And this is very sturdy. It holds it very, very well. Let's see if I could just tighten this a little bit more so it stops moving on us. There we go. Yeah, that works. So it, this holds it, it's sturdy, and it's also safe for me because I'm using a sharp knife. This bin here is one of the old um, compost bins. They're no longer using those in the city. They're using the large ones. So these, you can get them for either five bucks or cheaper or free. Um, I line it with a biodegradable bag. And what I do is I take the skin and the guts and I put it at the back of the property. It will either decompose or animals will feed on it. Um, it's the best way to dispose of the innards and it makes environmentally sense. I'm not gonna put it in a garbage bag and take it to the dump. Why would I do that? So with the skinning of the rabbit, I always start with the legs. And I really want you to be able to see this in great detail. There we go. Sharp, sharp knife. I've just finished sharpening. I cut at the front of each leg. Like that. Just to break through the skin. Not to get into the meat, just the skin. Sometimes you miss a little bit. So that's not, you know, anything to be surprised about. And I always cut outward, but not towards me, because I want to be able to not damage the meat or the puncture any of the innards. When I get to that point, I work around the leg. It is raining like crazy now and not feeling very nice at all. I think this is not the best angle for you. So I am gonna see if I can change the angle just to make it more um, feasible if somebody is learning. But well, you've seen, what I've done is I've ripped the skin at the front of the leg as such. And I'm actually going to work around to the back of the leg. Can you see that? I will see if I can get a better angle on this, but you see how I just worked around to the back of the leg? So the fur is separated from the leg. I could rip it off at that point, and we just have meat, fur down here. I'm gonna try to see if I could change the angle here for you. I'm hoping that's a little bit of a better angle for you. Um, we had left off at one leg was done. 
So now I'm going to go to the other leg and I'm again working to the back of between the skin and the leg. Now these rabbits are about 12 weeks old, which I usually like to do them between eight and 12 weeks, but we've been really busy. So it's been a little bit more of a delay than I normally would do. Now I have the fur at the front. I can put my finger through the fur until you can see right through. See, there's my hand. That is where I want to be. I take the knife and away from me and away from the meat, such as that. That way I've exposed the front of the rabbit. Now I can pull from the back. See that? There's the tail at the back and I'm pulling at the tail. Now, right here behind the butt, can put my hand through dividing the skin and the meat. When I get to this point, as you can see, my hand can go through. I'm looking over so I can see what you're seeing on the camera in case you're wondering. What I do is I just cut and you can see there, the skin, there's the tail. The skin has been cut and I will actually cut off at the tail at this point. Remember, my knife is super sharp, so I'm always careful uh, when I'm cutting through. This is where the scissors comes in place. Anytime I need to get through a bone and I don't want to hurt myself with a knife, that's what I do. Now, I pull, and this, honestly, is the easiest thing to do. It just comes off so easily. Now, when I get to this point, I don't save the head. Um, my mom gets very upset with me because she likes the head for stock and um, she just likes it in stews. The only reason I don't save the head is it just slows down the process because cutting around the bone and saving the skull is just a little bit much for me. But I do save them and uh, bones that I don't use for my neighbors who feed their dogs a raw diet. So it's not being wasted. But what I do do, and is I take the head, here's the wrap, the ears, and I cut the ears off because I am going to dehydrate those as dog treats. Remember I mentioned that earlier. So there's the ears. Those are being put aside, and like I said, they're going in the dehydrator, and fantastic dog treats. All natural, no preservatives can't beat that. And I'm going to pull down again. Now, when I get to this point, I'm at the arm. I'm going to put my finger through that membrane between the meat and the fur until it pokes through. See that? Do the other side, the exact same thing. Poke through. It just separates the skin or the fur from the meat. We are now at the wrist. There we go. There's the wrist. That is basically how you skin it. The head is here. Um, just so it doesn't look gory, I won't show you the skinning around the head. And I'm going to cut off at the wrists. For this portion, again, I use the scissor just because it's a little safer than the knife. These are poultry shears. Um, I'm not cutting through the bone itself, so I'm just doing the joints. So they work really well. There you go. Easy enough. I'm just gonna shut this off while I do the rest of the head because like I said, I don't wanna create any gore on YouTube and I don't want um, any negative comments. So I will be back when it's time to gut the rabbit. Remove the head and what I'm going to do is remove one of the feet from the holder and I am going to cut alongside. This little man was already 
his testicles have started to descend. So it's a good time to take him out of the cage. I just cut along that edge and I cut along the other edge. So I am literally um, just creating a little cut on both sides of the penis and the testicles. And I'm going to snap backwards. Now, when I do that, it makes it a whole lot easier to get inside um, the innards. What I'm going to do is put the knife so that I've got a little opening here. So what I'm gonna do is put the tip of the knife into the belly cavity and pull away from the innards. I don't want to puncture any of the organs. When you do that, as you can see, the guts just fall right out. Very simple. I do not feed my animals the morning of dispatch so that there is no feces or urine in their innards. And that makes for an easier and cleaner um, gutting. As I'm pulling out, there's innards that I do save. Number one, the kidneys. I pull those out. Organ meat is very healthy. And I do save the kidneys and the liver and the heart. So there are the kidneys. And you can't get fresher than this. Guts are still coming out. I hope you can see this okay. There's the belly. And then at the top is the liver. When I pull the liver, I do it very gently. And the reason I do that is I want to separate it from the innards. Okay, here's the liver. This here is the bile. You don't want that to get on your liver. So if you pinch at the top opening, you can pull out that bile and your liver is perfectly clean. I tell you, rabbit liver is my favorite liver, even above duck liver, which is fabulous. Um, the lungs, I do not save. Those I give to my friends for their dogs. And just making sure the heart's in there. The heart is the last thing. And here it is. There's the heart. It's going in there. So I have taken out all the innards of this rabbit. If there's any um, fat, which this guy does not have enough, a lot of fat. You can see this. This is the fat that your rabbit is super, super lean meat. See that? That's the only fat. Now, the fat of a rabbit is not a tasty fat, so I remove any that I come across. Um, if I'm doing ground rabbit, I always mix it with pork. I actually have a video already in our library on YouTube here of uh, when I mince rabbit and pork together. Now, I'm just going to remove the testicles and the penis here that section there is best removed with the scissors because i'm going through the pelvic bone so that's one side and this is the other side and everything comes out beautifully look at that so i have a super clean rabbit right now now, there is one thing that I always try to remember to do right away when I have it hanging because you get busy and then you forget. The back of the rabbit leg, from the bum, coming down the mid thigh, right here, there's a gland. And if you remove this gland. This one is tiny on this rabbit. You avoid any of that gamey flavor. This was 
like nothing. I've come across rabbits where it's huge. It's like a scent gland. Uh, probably, you know, some way of them attracting their mates when they're uh, ready to breed. There. This side was a little larger. I find it's easiest to pull with my nail, to be honest, not, uh, not with a knife. That's as big as it is. And like I said, it's at the back of the thigh, right before the knee. And then we're at the, this here is the ankle. The rabbit foot does go for my friend's dog treats. And the other one, I have to do it when I have it in my tub. want you to see my tub but I don't know if I can get this over here let's just move it down there's my tub so here it is I put it in this tub and sometimes I snap sometimes I cut here is the wrap gorgeous gorgeous piece of meat when you get them in the grocery store, you notice that rabbits are really white in color. It's because they've been washed in bleach water. That to me is disgusting and not at all how I want to process my meat. I'm going to let this rabbit sit in the fridge for a day, 24 hours, maybe a little bit more, and then I will part it out um, as to vacuum seal it and freeze it for different meals. The reason I let it rest is meat is always much more tender if you let it rest before freezing it. I do it with my ducks, I do it with my chickens, the rabbits. Uh, we raised the pig last year with some friends and we did the same thing. As I was harvesting the females, I realized I was telling you to go around the penis and someone who's never harvested before may be thinking, Okay, well, I have a female, so now what do I do? There's no penis. Well, it's really about the pelvis area. So I'm going to do a female here. I've been, I'm almost done. So with the females, it is exactly the same thing. I find that the, um, the skin will break off, not the skin, but the fur will come apart in the belly a lot easier with the females because the penis is not in the way. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing here. Pull from the back again, you know, the tail area. And I will show you the pelvis. To Pull away the fur, just like before. If you pull straight down rather than out, they stay on the hooks a lot easier. So here we have, no penis of course, right? If you cut on both sides of that pelvis bone, such as this, I always snap backwards because it makes it just that much easier. And then, Cut around that pelvis bone. There you go. So this little piece will come up, which is great because that makes it easier to access all the ends. Here, put the point in, pull away from the belly and away from yourself. Just like that. No different. Pull that bone out of there. The innards are falling out. And no, no difference at all. Again, the kidneys, gotta save those. Now, let me tell you, these females, these were all the same litter, males and females. The females are a lot fatter. There's a lot of fat on these guys. 
And the reason is females are able to breed at a younger age than males. This is why I keep them in separate pens right from when I uh, wean them from the mom. The females can breed at about five to six months. Males really should breed after eight, nine months. I know some people breed them at like four, six months. Um, I believe in not putting pressure on these animals. So breeding them too young is a little hard on them. I tell you, this is the last female I'm doing out of this liver. Oh, out of this litter, I have not lost one liver yet by breaking the bile. So I'm doing like awesome today. Again, all this fat will be removed and the females are a lot fatter. And I noticed that their gland is also larger than the males. So obviously they're more sexually mature than the males are. Like I said, I had left this a little while longer than I normally like to. Like to do them eight to 10 weeks is my preferred. These guys are about 12 weeks old. Um, just taking a little bit of fur that got on the skin away. Now, I don't wash them now, but when I go to part them out, I do give them a quick rinse, not soaking in water, but a quick rinse, just to make sure that if there's any hair on the body, it is removed. And that, my friends, was just to show you the difference between a male and a female. I possibly can show you the gland here for the females. I actually have to go in there with the knife and just pull it up because it is quite a bit both here than the males. There it is. See that gland? That's what I'm trying to get out of there. Make sure we don't have that gamey flavor. That is the difference.